So I have everything laid out, getting ready to start assembling everything. And was looking ahead at the steps that was going to be taken. And when I put the unit on its side and looked at the first location that I'd be putting a screw in, I see that one of the factory screws is loose. I don't know, can you see that in there? So I would suggest going through and just making sure everything is tight before you begin. Save a little bit of trouble down the road. I'm probably going to add some Loctite to these to make sure that they uh, don't work loose over time. So, helpful little tip for the day. Okay, so I finished tightening all the screws. There's two in each corner. Uh, I'm glad I double checked them because I did find two more that were loose. They hadn't unscrewed like that first one, but they were loose. So they are all now nice and tight and have Loctite on them to prevent them from coming out again. We're going to be installing the uprights first and you'll notice that some of them have some scratch marks on them. This is to be expected because this frame was assembled at the factory and tested to make sure that everything was working properly. So don't be discouraged by these or think that this is some kind of shipping damage or anything like that. And you'll notice the hole on one side is just a regular hole, but if I flip this over, the hole is bigger. And the bigger side of the hole needs to face the outsides of the machines because that's where the screw heads are going to go in to hold the crossbars. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay? One other thing I want to point out is when you set the unit up on its edge to make installing some of these items easier you're going to want to make sure that the cables that come out of the corners are not pinched or pulled or uh, caught underneath the machine or anything like that because we don't want to pull them out of the control board that's in the base and we also don't want to damage these cables so a little bit of caution as you're flipping this back and forth to do some of the things to uh, access it because like the large rod is going to go here screw is going to come in from the bottom so the easiest way to do this is on the side okay just a couple points and I'm about to begin the first phase of the assembly
First thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the couplers. The couplers have two set screws on each side. So you're going to want to make sure that one set screw is on the flat of the motor shaft and then tighten the other one down. Only one will be on a flat. Okay. But we also don't want to go all the way down on a stepper motor shaft. We want the stepper motor shaft to stop just slightly above the set screws because when we put in the threaded rod we want it to come down just slightly below the set screws we want a gap between the two because then that will allow this to flex as needed if there's any kind of wobble or misalignment in our z-axis screws So this is the bed leveling wheel. It's hard to see in the plastic, but it has imprinted up and arrows to let you know which way is up and down. I'm going to try and put some acrylic paint in these to make it more noticeable and easier to use when it's actually installed. So my painting skills need some work, but here is the Add adjustment knobs with the acrylic paint in the arrows and the up symbols. Makes it much more visible, easier to see, and it's going to make it a little bit more user friendly to use uh, when I'm actually leveling the bed.
Okay, so I forgot that the camera was off due to the phone call I previously received. So I ended up making the rest of the cable connections without the camera on. So, um, but they're pretty easy to follow along. They have, I don't know if you can see these little yellow tags that line up with the different extruders, the different limit switches, makes it very easy to connect. So we are about ready to power this up for the first time. So I'm going to remove the protective screen. I'm going to turn on the power switch here on the side. And we're going to hit the power button. Okay, and then according to the guide, it says to hit home and off. So this will perform the auto home. So there's the extruder, and now here comes the bed. And because of the dual limit switches, it should straighten itself out. There's the one side, and the other side. So now all that's left is to move this to its permanent location. This is just where I was building it. And install the glass printing service. I need to make sure I clean that really well. And then we can start doing some uh, bed leveling and test printing. So there we go. And this cable here at the bottom, this is for the filament runout detector. I have not mounted that yet. And real quick, if I can get in there. You can see the paint I put on the wheels. So it just makes it a little bit easier to see which way to turn to raise the bed and lower the bed. So, alright, thank you for joining me. And the next time you see this, it'll be in its new location.